So thank everyone for attending this pre-construction community meeting for the Kroger Drive Phase 2 project from Ray White Road to Park Vista Circle. This is city project number 1010-15-2, and the project is located in Council District 4. My name is Chad Allen. I'm the project manager for the project. Also on the call tonight, we have the project engineer. His name is Jonathan Ireton. He's with Pacheco Coke. And then we also have representatives from the contractor on the phone. We have Stephen Lancaster, I believe, with Reliable Paving Inc. And we have Stephen Larson from Reliable Paving also. We have some folks from our construction office in the call. Um, Eric Tenner, who's going to be our construction inspector, is on the call tonight. And then we also have council member Carrie Moon is attending the meeting and also Alicia Ortiz from his office. So. Um, I'm about to start the presentation and we're going to have a question and answer period after that. But um, council member Moon, if you'd like to say anything about the project or address the folks attending the meeting, um, feel free to do that now if you'd like to do that. Sure, I appreciate that. I will uh, just thank everybody for participating and uh, looking forward to this project um, being completed. Um, I, I do want to let you all know that I'll be on for about 20 minutes. My daughter has a one act play at the Timber Creek High School, so I'll be stepping off to watch that around to get there before seven o'clock. So apologize for that, but I will uh, don't, don't, don't let that take away from the excitement about this uh, this upcoming road improvement project. Okay, thank you. That's fantastic. So the purpose of this meeting is to provide information about the construction of Kroger Drive Phase 2. During the meeting, we're going to talk about the project limits, um, the scope of the project, typical construction processes that will happen on site. We're going to talk about the project phasing and traffic control, and also about the project schedule, and also about notifications that business owners and residents out there might receive prior to construction and during construction to let them know about what's happening during the construction project. And then at the end, we're going to have a question and answer period at the end of the presentation. So this slide shows the project limits. This these red lines here on this map show where the construction work is going to be done in Kroger Drive. At the west end of the project is Ray White Road and um, our project limits on the west end begin over here. And then on the east end, our project limits end at Park Vista Circle, at the eastern leg of Park Vista Circle. We're also going to do some work in Ray White Road at the middle entrance to the Central High School, which is located right here. This is the Central High School. This is the big Kroger distribution facility, and this is US 377 over here. So this is the project limits map. This is the scope of the project. I put this in here so that folks could read it later if they're interested, but I'm going to discuss the project scope by using the exhibits on the next few slides. So this is an overall exhibit showing the extents of the project. Over here to the west and the left, you can see Ray White Road. This is Kroger Drive and Park Vista Circle is over here on the east. We're going to signalize a couple of the intersections right here at Park Vista Circle in the middle and at um, the entrance to the Kroger facility here. We're going to be doing work around Chieftain Way and Central High School is down here at the southeast corner of this intersection. So this is a closer view near Chieftain Way. In the area around Chieftain Way, we're going to widen Kroger Drive to the north. And we're going to do that so that we can maintain these left turn lanes from Kroger Drive on a Chieftain Way. And then also so that we can provide an additional through lane in this area. To the east over here, we're going to connect to this existing sidewalk and we're going to build a new 10 foot wide sidewalk on the south side of Kroger Drive extending to the east. You can see that right here. And then in this area, we're going to redo the existing asphalt pavement. So this is the eastern end of the project. Um, you can see the yellow line here is the new sidewalk on the south side of Kroger Drive. That's a 10 foot wide sidewalk that we're going to build and we're going to build it all the way over here to Park Vista Circle. And then the roadway in this area, we're going to widen it and repave it and restripe it so that at the end of the project, we're going to have a four lane roadway, two lanes in each direction. Right now, what exists out there today is a two lane roadway, one lane in each direction. So after the project, there'll be four lanes. 
We are going to um, construct traffic signals right here at Park Vista Circle, and then also at this big um, industrial driveway to the Kroger distribution facility. We're going to time these traffic signals so that they work in unison and so that traffic in this area can flow smoothly through here without any great inconvenience. And finally, we're doing work in Ray White Road. Um, this is Kroger Drive over here. North is to the right. This is Ray White Road. This is Central High School. And we're going to open up this existing, existing median so that folks traveling south on Ray White Road can make a left and they can turn into the Central High School parking lot. And then at the end of the day, they can exit the parking lot and also make a left and go south here on Ray White Road. Um, that movement today is prohibited. It can't happen because this median is continuous in here and you, you can't make that movement. We're going to signalize this new intersection and put in crosswalks and, and make it safe for everybody out there. So that was the scope of the project. Jonathan, did you have any other major things maybe that I missed about the scope of the project you'd like to talk about? No, sir. I think you covered it. Okay, great. So this slide just discusses some of the typical construction processes that are going to be happening, happening as part of the project. Folks who drive through the construction area or businesses that are located along Kroger or Ray White or residents out there will see these things happening during the construction project. So right at the beginning of the construction project, the contractor is going to issue some notifications. A week before construction starts, they'll deliver door hangers to all of the properties that are right there on Kroger Drive to let everyone know at least a week ahead of time that the construction is about to start. Also, the contractor is going to put up some variable message signs around the project area that um, talk about the road, the work that's about to begin. And then finally, there will be project signs out on the construction site at the um, couple at the two ends of Kroger Drive and in Ray White Road. And those signs will contain telephone numbers. Um, anyone driving through the construction area who has um, some concerns about the project or questions, if you see any safety issues, please call the numbers on those signs and you can talk to someone at the city of Fort Worth about that during the project. Um, right there, right at the beginning of the project, you'll also see the contractor setting up their traffic control. Um, the traffic control will depend on what area of the project the contractor is working in, but um, the traffic control devices will consist of cones. Um, there will be barrels and signs and barricades out on the various locations of the construction site. Around the same time, at the beginning of the project, you'll see the contractor implementing the erosion control plan. For this project, the erosion control measures um, consist of silt fencing that will be installed parallel to the roadway to keep dirt off the road and to keep dirt out of the um, drainage ditches along the side of the road, especially during storm events. It'll keep dirt and mud off of the roadway. And then also, the contractor will be installing inlet protection. So that that same dirt doesn't get down in our existing storm drain system and clog them and cause flooding. So right after that, the contractor really wants to focus on the utility work. The contractor has to get all of the underground utility work done before they can move forward and do pavement and sidewalk construction. So this project does include some underground utility work. We have some water and sewer and storm drain work. The water work mainly consists of relocating fire hydrants and water meters out of the way of the proposed paving, specifically that wide sidewalk we're going to build. Um, the sewer work is mainly adjusting manholes to the proper elevation in the paved area. And then the contractor does have some storm drain to build. We're going to install some new culverts and we're going to modify some existing culverts. So after the uh, underground utility work is done, you'll see the contractor start the subgrade um, preparation and the pavement construction and the traffic installation, traffic signal installation for the project. And then later on towards the end, you'll see the contractor working on the landscaping and sodding. And then finally, they'll remove the traffic control and clean up the project in early of next year. So these are the kinds of processes folks on the call and folks in the area who travel through the site or who have business around there, these are the things you'll see happening over the next nine or 10 months. So these next few slides talk about the project phasing specifically for this project. You can see the red areas on this exhibit are called phase one. These are the areas we're really going to focus on at the beginning of the construction project. We're really going to focus on this area down here in Ray White Road. We want to 
get this median opening installed and constructed and built and usable before school starts again. So we're going to make sure and get this done during the summer vacation. At the same time, an area of really um, high importance for us is this connection of Chieftain Way. So these are identified in red. These are the areas the contractor really is going to focus on at the beginning of the project. After that, the contractor has some flexibility. They can move forward with phases two and three, which is shown on this sheet here, the yellow and the cyan. This is construct. This is concrete construction. The contractor can move forward with this next, or they can do the eastern, sorry, eastern portion of the roadway, which is called phases four and five in the legend. They could do this area first. It really depends on what underground utilities have been completed and what storm drain has been completed before they decide which area they wanna focus on. Are they gonna focus on the west or the east? In any case, when the contractor does this work, there's always going to be two lanes of travel open on Kroger Drive. One, there's always gonna be one lane in each direction open on Kroger Drive throughout the construction of the project. So Stephen Lancaster, do you wanna say anything else about the project phasing before I move on? I'm really just trying to get folks to hear another voice than mine <laughs> during the meeting. Stephen, do you have anything? No, it's, it's early days still. Uh, we, we want to try and figure out how long it's going to take to get the underground work in first, and then uh, we'll figure out if we, we're going to take on the asphalt widening first or, or, or do the concrete from the other end. So, uh, you know, once school closes for the season, it's going to give us there's traffic out there and we'll be able to tackle it a bit quicker. Perfect. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, so here's the project schedule for the project. We expect to start construction on May 24th. Um, according to the project documents, the specification book, there's a project duration of 270 calendar days. So that means we're going to be completing the project in February of next year. Um, the standard hours for the contractor to work on the project are from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Th Monday through Friday. The contractor can be allowed to work on the weekends if they fall behind and they need to recover some of the schedule. If there's certain work that um, would be a benefit to be done on the weekend, if it would impact folks out there in the community less, then um, the contractor might want to work on the weekend. So if they request that in writing and if it's approved by the city, the contractor can work on the weekends from 9 to 5. And then there's some notes on here about the notification methods also, the variable message boards and the project signs and the door hangers we talked about previously. So this, this schedule can be affected by unforeseen events such as utility conflicts. We've done our due, dil, due diligence. We've identified existing utilities out there. We've moved utilities out of the way already. But during construction, if we encounter a utility in the field, it could possibly cause a delay in the schedule. Weather can cause delays in the um, construction schedule. And then also, unfortunately, since COVID started during the time of COVID, material availability can also delay construction projects. For instance, our contractor might want um, concrete to be delivered on a certain day, and that may not be available because of material availability issues. That's just something we're dealing with on all of our, our construction projects now. So in summary, we're going to begin construction of the project on May 24th. We're going to really focus on opening up that median in Ray White and completing that during the summer vacation. And then we just want to make sure everyone knows that two-way traffic will remain open on Kroger Drive throughout the duration of the project. So we're about to have a question and answer session, but first um, we have received some questions in writing by email prior to this meeting. So we wanted to go ahead and go through those now in case folks on the phone have these same questions, we can go ahead and, and answer them. And then after this, um, we may have, I can't see the, check bo the ch chat box, but we may have received questions um, in the chat box and we're gonna go through those and then we can answer, try to answer any other questions that might come up. So Raul, I think you're gonna help me answer these questions. Absolutely, good evening. I'm Raul Lopez, I'm the engineering manager that uh, manages the arterial or thoroughfare products. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read the question, right, Chad? Yes, sir, if you would. People uh, are, don't want to hear me talk to myself, I don't think, on this slide. So yes, please. Yeah. Uh, why is the city reconstructing Kroger Drive and stopping the project before improving 
all the way to US, US 377. So we've, we've received a couple of questions like this. So our Kroger Drive project consists of two phases. The one we're about to start is called phase two, but we're actually building it first. Phase one of the Kroger Drive project does include the improvements at the railroad crossing and at US 377. Um, unfortunately, um, in order to start building those projects, we have to get permits from the UPRR and TxDOT, and we have to enter into construction agreements with them. And we've been working on those agreements for a long, long time, but those agreements are delaying the project. So we continue to work on those, and we hope to start phase one of the project in spring of next year, right around the time when we're finishing this current phase of the project, phase two. So another question that we, we've had is the crossing of Kroger Drive at the Union Pacific Railroad is in serious disrepair, causes dangerous traffic issues. What is the plan for needed improvements for Kroger Drive at the rural crossing in US 377? So we do have a plan. We, we do have a plan for this area. Um, we're working on the permitting. Our plan is to widen Kroger Drive to allow one um, additional eastbound left turn lane onto US 377 and also one additional westbound through lane in Kroger Drive. And our project down there also includes new traffic signals and new pedestrian signals to accommodate the roadway, roadway widening there and also a new pedestrian crossing. Chad, I'm not sure if you have that slide on here that shows that portion of Kroger Drive as it approaches US 377. I do, but honestly, Ravel, I'm not sure if it's current. Okay, that, that's fine. So um, another question is, will traffic from Kroger Drive construction be diverted onto Park Vista Circle at any time? So as part of our project, we are not going to intentionally divert any traffic from Kroger Drive onto Park Vista Circle. Will the Park Vista Circle connection to Kroger Drive become a right in, right out only connection? At, um, also, as part of the project, no, neither end of Park Vista Circle will, be, will become a right turn only in or a right turn only out um, connection to Kroger Drive. And is it true that we're adding three new traffic lights on a road that is half, half a mile to three quarters of a mile long as part of this project? That seems like it might be very inconvenient. So, yes, we are adding traffic signals as part of the project. We're adding two traffic signals in Kroger Drive. Um, we talked about them earlier. There's one at the western leg of Park Vista Circle, and there's another one at the Kroger driveway. The two lights will be timed so that they work together to assure smooth traffic movement through that area. We're also installing a third traffic signal. It's being installed on Ray White Road at the new median opening. And the intent of that median opening and signal is to reduce the traffic going in and out of the central high school driveways on Kroger Drive. So those are the questions we received prior to the meeting. And um, we can have additional questions now. I can't see the chat box. So Raul, are there, are there any questions in the chat box before we just open it up? We do not have any questions at this time, Chad. So we'll keep Chad, Chad Rowell, this is Jeff. I have a, I have a couple that have come in. I'm sorry. So they must okay, so go ahead, and add, go ahead and go ahead and read those. Um, I'm hoping my engineering team and my contracting team will help me answer these questions, and of course, Raul. So okay. go ahead. Okay. I, I've, I've got two, and they're, and they're and they're good. So, um, <laughs> the the residents would like assurances um, of the cut through that we're making on Ray Wright. Ray White, man, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? Um, will not be uh, opened until the signals are in place. Correct. Let's let's discuss that for a little bit because I think that with uh, people turning all of a sudden turning in and out there without that signal would would become uh, troublesome. Can we can we talk about that for a second? Um, sure. So we're we're trying to construct that median opening first so that we can get it usable before school starts. Raul, do you know? I mean, that does that include the the signals in that area too? Yes. Uh, the cut through at Ray White. Yes. That will be signalized. Yes. So we're not going to open that up until we have the signals completed. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It needs to remain closed until the signal is completed. Okay.
All right, and the second question, uh, talk, talking a little bit more about the two traffic signals uh, really close to each other on Kroger. Uh, we know they're going to be um, signalized so they're, they're flowing properly and, and not really disrupting traffic. Uh, can we talk a little bit about why we chose to put the two signals in there uh, so close together? Uh, Chad, yeah, I can help you with that and maybe jump in. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I can, uh, Jonathan can probably help me with that as well. So initially those were going to be roundabouts and the reason they basically intersection improvements uh, to add capacity to the intersections were needed. There were, there were some um, difficulties turning left out of the Park Vista Circle Western leg of the, of the circle. And there's also obviously difficulties turning out of uh, the Kroger distribution center going um, eastbound. So those have been problematic uh, intersections and initially they were gonna be roundabouts, but um, an intersection control evaluation was done and um, we looked at it and we um, it was determined that a signal would work better, uh, not only because the roundabout uh, would Present problems for those trucks turning out of the distribution center, but also the signals we can interconnect and, and have them work in, in you know synchronized so that when it turns green on one, as you know, traffic drives towards the other one, the other one turns green. Sort of like they work in downtown area. Um, so you're you're not hitting a red, a red um, traffic signal or a red red um, uh, ball. As you approach the signal, so they're they're going to be interconnected and they're going to work together. I think that addresses the question, right? Yeah. I will say uh, yes, and uh, we can provide additional detail um, if needed uh, later. Yeah, it was difficulty. Moving through that intersection and then making left turns from uh, either one of those intersections. The reason why we're proposing signals. Okay, so we'd be happy to take additional questions now. I just also want to point out the contact information on this page that everyone's looking at. My contact information is there. I'm the project manager. I'll be around throughout construction of the project. You can call or email me anytime about that. Our construction inspector is Eric Tenner. His contact information is here. And Stephen Lancaster is representing the contractor. So I would suggest if you have any questions about the project to, to reach out to me first, and then we can go from there. But we'd be happy to answer other questions or try to. Chad, this is Alicia. Hi, Alicia. Hi. I just wanted to make a quick comment about the intersection at 377 and that railroad crossing. Is there any way that that can be temporarily um, maintained so that when the project phase one comes about, because it, it is getting kind of bad with the dips in that area. Is there any way to get that taken care of, at least in the interim? So, so, least, yeah, go ahead, Raul. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so if the if the um, failure, pavement failure is outside of the red road right away, yes, we can take care of that. If it is inside the right away, that's what presents challenges because we have to obtain um, uh, railroad permits, and that's what's holding up phase one because we haven't been able to um, basically obtain input from the railroad. Uh, apparently, they issued some furloughs, and there's not enough people, and we haven't been able to get much feedback from them, and we're we're really struggling with that. So if the if the back part is outside the railroad tracks, I mean railroad right away, not the track, but right away. Uh, we can certainly take care of that, yeah. Um, but if it's inside the rental right away, then that just puts us in the same predicament that we are with phase one. We can look into it and see where, you know, where the uh, the roadway has failed, where it has potholes. And, and okay, thank you. Uh, this is Eric. I have a question about the about the traffic control. Okay, this is Eric Tenner. Yes. 
Hey, how's it going, Eric? I'm fine. How are you, you doing? And are, you and I are going to become good friends over the next 10 months, I think, working on this. <laughs> I it's know that. Right. Okay. <laughs> the question I have about the traffic control at the end of the uh, workday with the contractor um, overcheck the traffic control to make sure that everything is still set up correctly so it won't be no no mishaps on anything. So at the drive. So yes, sir. At the beginning of every traffic, at the beginning of every construction day, the contractor is supposed to maintain their traffic control and make sure everything is in good order. If you, since you're going to be my eyes on the ground, or if I, or if any residents call those project sign numbers and let us know that that's not the case, we'll immediately issue a letter to or a, a notice to the contractor to go out and fix that. Okay, that'll work. I'm, I'm good with that. Just a comment on that. Um, quite often after the work day is over, especially late at night, we've had cars going through the barricades and knocking them over. And also when there's a bad storm out there, sometimes the stuff gets blown away. Uh, we we do send people out regularly to check on them. But on occasion, um, you may see something that we don't know about. And we'd appreciate a call. We've, we'll have a 24 hour contact number for that as well. Thank you, Stephen, for mentioning that. We appreciate it. That's great. We do have a couple of questions popping up in chat now as well. Okay. Uh, the first one is um, the. Uh, he thinks the point of the traffic light question is how often will traffic on Kroger Drive be stopped for the Kroger Distribution Center trucks to be exiting? Do we have any detail on that yet? No, I don't believe we have that information that the signal will be timed um, according to demand, basically. So, um, Jonathan, do we, do we have any estimate of timing? I don't think we have that information at this time. No, it's usually once the signals are installed, they will go out into the field and observe over a few days and then set the timing based off of how traffic is actually operating. Right. Great. And then the next one coming in is, um, will the traffic light on Ray White only be in use during the opening and closing of the high school throughout the school year, or will the lights be stopping the flow of traffic throughout the day? Jonathan, Paul, if that was going to be an on-demand? Uh, yes, the Ray White signal is only going to be operating during uh, during school. So on the weekend, it's just going to be uh, most likely just set to a flashing yellow flashing just to yellow. signalize that it's there. But it's the intent is not to have it stop traffic when there's no need for it. Great. Uh, there's one more question. How far into the grass? Well, oh, we have a couple more. So, how far into the grass behind the homes at Chieftain Way will the new lanes be? In other words, how much closer is traffic going to be to the houses? I can take that as well. Uh, it's only going to be another 12 feet closer to the houses. Just enough room for one more lane. Okay, and then the, will there be shoulder room for temporary overflow when traffic at the cold storage facility gets crowded? I assume that's on Kroger. I don't believe we are leaving any shoulder room. Pretty much the existing pavement on the north side of Kroger is staying where it's at. It's widening. We're getting a little bit wider there, but yeah, there's not going to be adding curb or anything. Going to be a shoulder anymore. I think we're what is it? A one foot shoulder, um, Jonathan? Yes, sir. It is one foot. So there will there won't be any shoulder. Um, along either our significant shoulder as there is today after the project's complete.
Right, there's a follow up to the. Um, the yeah, so feet finding, the winding of feet. power drive is done within the public right away. All of that uh, area was actually reserved for uh, widening of power drive. So, um, but we're still keeping a, uh, a 12 feet buffer between the homes, which is typical buffer um, between arterials and, and homes. I understand that. My question more so is around what is the enforcement going to be? On the illegal truck traffic that shouldn't even be down here anyways we cannot get help we have reached out to everybody we can think of and our houses are shaking to pieces from the truck going by and nobody will help us and now they're going to be 12 feet closer so we, we will reach out to the police department that's an enforcement issue i, I understand um we will reach out to the police department and, and see if they can help with that. I think we've we've heard that that concern many times, and we've reached out to the water, to the uh, police department. We'll reach out to them again. Hi, good afternoon. This is John. I have a question. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, John, go ahead. Okay. Will there be any disruption to water or sewer service in the construction area around the, around the uh, developments? And well, also one other question, will you be doing any, I guess you won't be doing any, as far as landscaping, you won't be doing any modifications to the, uh, to the fencing that is around the development right across from the construction? Are we talking about the development uh, on Chieftain Way? Oh. Correct. I, I, yeah, the one, the development right on Chieftain Way, correct? Yeah, I don't believe we're, uh, yeah, we're not impacting the fences or any of that, so that we're, we're, not, we're not touching that. Am I correct, Jonathan? Okay. Yes, the fences are staying where they're at, how they are. And as far as the water service, there's, we don't intend any water disruption. The only thing changes is we are moving some hydrants in order to fit the sidewalk, but those could be isolated by themselves to get moved. Right. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, we're open to take any more questions um, or, or, or if there are, aren't any more questions, we could, we could end the meeting, I guess, Raul, but, you know, we're here if anyone has any questions to talk about this project. Yeah, we'll just take a couple of minutes to chat and see if anybody okay. has any more questions and if not. Um, okay. Okay. Also, would you put the contact information back up and chat if you don't mind? We have a lot of call in users. So if you would read your um, phone number and email out so they uh, they have it without uh, having to try to find the presentation later. Okay, sure. And yeah, it would be it'd be great if everybody knew where to find the presentation letter. I can send it to you. We can post it or whatever, but um, I'll read out the contact information. My name is Chad Allen. I'm the project manager. My telephone number is. 817-392-8021. Um, you can call me. Uh, my email address is chad.allen, and let me spell that for you. It's C-H-A-D dot A-L-L-E-N. Then it's the at symbol, and then fortworthtexas.gov. And Fort Worth, Texas is all spelled out, and it's all one word. I think I just saw another question pop up, but I couldn't read it. Chad, this is Dan. I couldn't remember. If there was ever a plan. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that that's all right. I was just going to speak the question. I was, I couldn't remember if I saw a signal light to be located at Chieftain or not. There will not be a signal at Chieftain. There will be a pedestrian uh, warning sign, or actually, uh, RRFB. Uh, 
it's basically a beacon that lets uh, traffic know that there's somebody about to cross them. Okay. Uh, we yeah, there was a signal warrant study done at Chieftain, and, and the signal is not warranted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, other contact information for folks who are calling in but can't see the presentation is for the construction inspector. His name is Eric Tenner. He's a construction inspector for the project. His telephone number is 817-478-1783. His email address also is his first and last name, so it's eric.tenner. And let me spell that for you. It's E R I C dot T I uh oh I put an extra N in there. T I N N E R then the at symbol and then Fort Worth Texas dot gov. And again Fort Worth Texas is all spelled out and it's one word. So I'd recommend um when you're contacting folks about the project, start with me and then um I'll get a, I'll get in touch with Eric and we will try um to help you and we'll get the contractor involved as necessary. Hey, Ch hey, Chad, this is Eric, the inspector again. Hey. Hey, I was just going to uh, let you know that phone number is incorrect. The, the number to get directly in touch with me from my cell phone, from the city cell phone, is going to be 817-647-2566. And you can reach me at that number anytime you need me. Okay, Eric, thank you so much. Um, I grabbed this off of our, you know, our city of Fort Worth contact website. I should have talked to you ahead of time. I apologize. Is that your, is that, does that happen to be your office phone? Yeah, that's the office phone right okay, there. Okay, good. It's not, it's not completely wrong. Okay. No, you can keep it on there, but to get it directly in contact with me, you can use that 647 number. Cause that's the one that is. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. No problem. Well, I just really appreciate everyone for uh, um, attending the meeting, especially the folks who answered all the hard questions that I couldn't answer. So thank you, Jonathan and Stephen and Raul, you the most. Alicia, thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. And all, all the folks um, in the area of the project who were interested in the project, thank you very much for participating tonight and for thank all you, the gentlemen. great questions. Thanks, Chad. Uh, Hey, would you send us an updated uh, contact list, all the numbers and the email addresses? Yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Okay, talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye-bye. Check, check, could you do the start, uh, mention the start date one more time that I just came in from chat? Yeah, sure, no problem. So we're gonna start construction on May 24th. And construction is going to last for 270 calendar today, so we should be completed in February of 2022. So we're going to start construction about a month from now, and before that, you'll see those notifications happening, project signs being put up on site, and um, people directly connected to Kroger Drive being um, receiving door hangers and things like that. Jeff, I don't know what protocol is, so I'm going to leave it up to you to conclude the meeting or we can hang around. It's fine with me. I mean, I can't see the um, 
I can't see the list of folks who are here, so I don't know if there's still a bunch of people on the call. Oh, okay, there's the list. There's still quite a few people in attendance. We'll just give it another minute or two chat. Okay. No more questions, we'll adjourn.